Hello to everyone from Texas. This is Grandpa Hickory. I wanted to uh, greet everybody and come out and, and talk with you about something. Um, this has not been a day from heaven for me. And I honestly want to say that we are truly living in a world of fools. And by this, I mean outright fools. Listen, um, I had to go to the chiropractor this morning, and I had to drive all the way to Red Oak, Texas. And it's more than an hour and 40, 45 minutes from where my apartment is. I live in senior apartments, and I had to drive all that way. Well, my daughter started a new job this morning in Boise, Idaho, and she contacted me and said, Hey, Dad, I I'm going to be calling you, and uh, as soon as I get things going and everything, I'm going to call you. I said, Okay, all right, sweetheart. Well, I got everything together. My cat, Oreo, had come in the kitchen, and uh, my wife's dishes that I've got, I, I want to keep, you know, for the rest of my life, my wife is dead. She died from cancer. And uh, any road, uh, Ori jumped up on the counter and uh, one of my six ounce bowls that my wife had picked out and she liked it very much. It was one of her favorites. It broke all to pieces. Well, I had to run in here and clean all this up. Plus, I had two other cats outside that I had to bring in. I had to lock everything up. I had to get things ready, and I had to start driving. Well, in all this turmoil, to make a long story short, I ran out the door, got everybody in, made sure all the you know the stove and everything was off, and I always play uh, instrumental classical music on my Alexa so that uh, uh, my cats can have it. I turn it on low volume so that they can hear it, and... Uh, I went out, locked my apartment up, got my car, and drove off. Well, about 20, 25 miles, I was thinking, well, she ought to be calling me now. I left my phone in my apartment on charging. I didn't pick up my phone. So I kept driving. I drove all that way, about an hour and 40, 45 minutes, and I got there. I had a terrible time. On the way, I have to go out through the country, and I go out the other side of Grandview and head towards Maypearl, leading into Venus, Texas, and I take all the side roads where there's a real narrow road. Well, this 18-wheeler tanker pulled in front of me, now, the speed limit 60 miles an hour. He did 20 miles an hour. And he was doing this on the road. Well, finally, he moved over, and I thought it was okay to pass him. I went to pass him. He ran me off the road. He tried to crash his 18-wheeler into me. So I hit my brakes. And I let him go way up in front of me. And I got behind him. I stayed back. Listen, I'm peaceful. I'm peaceful. I'm not looking for a gun battle with anybody. And if you are, you better pray through and get right with God. Just because you got a license to carry don't mean that you can go out and kill somebody. Well, they're doing stuff to me. I'm going to do it to them. No, you don't either. That's not the way it is. You are to seek peace with all men. And if they're bad, you're to pray for them. You're to love your enemies. I know that's hard. I know you don't want to hear it. But let me finish, okay? We are living in a world of fools. Let me tell you what he did. So we go on down this big old long road. Listen, it's about, I don't know, 35, 40 miles. Doing 20 miles an hour. 60 mile an hour zone. I can't pass him. He's going back and forth. Back and forth. Well, finally, he pulled up at the top of a hill, and he pulled over. 
Well, first he stops at a dead stop. It's double yellow stripe. You can't pass. It's a hill. I'm a, we're on top of a hill. And cars come over that hill just like this. They're flying over that hill. He stopped here. Cars are flying over the hill. Well, I had no choice. I pulled out around him because, man, I had, I had to be at the car practice office. The time was ticking away. I'd left late. You know, I told you about my cat breaking my, my wife's dishes that I love so much. But any road, uh, when I went around, I honked at him because he had me blocked. Well, he pulled out a gun. Did you hear me? It looked like a, a 1911 45 caliber. Well, I immediately did this number. I, I tore down the road. I did about 75, 85 miles an hour. I got down the stop sign, slung on my brakes, and then I turned left and took off as soon as there was no traffic. And these are all country roads. I, listen, that road that he pulled this on was very narrow. But you know, I forgive him and I prayed for him coming back because, you know, people like that are the ones that get killed. But let me tell you something. I want to tell you something. All you, I know you're saying, Grandpa, you should have, you should have stood your ground and shot him. Let me explain something to you, okay? In every car in the United States of America, there are chips in different locations that you will never find. Now, when you purchase a car, this is programmed into these five different chips. And they are constantly sending up to the law enforcement satellites. That's right. They put up law enforcement satellites during the 1980s. If you've ever wondered, how in the world did they solve that crime of that shooting out there on the freeway. How did they know? Well, let me explain it to you now. You hotheads that want to pull your gun. I'm going to stand my ground. Let me tell you something. Hold your hosses. And let me explain to you. Not only that, but when you carry your cell phone, your cell phone is constantly pinging. It goes to the law enforcement satellites. It goes to the cell phone towers. And it's broadcast to the local police departments. Do your research. I have. Now, let me tell you something. All you hotheads want to pull your gun. I'm licensed to carry. I'm going to stand my ground. Let me tell you something now. They know exactly who you are. And you pull that gun and you kill somebody. Why? Get away from them. Leave them alone. And you say, oh, let me tell you something now. Hold your hosses. They're going to bump into somebody that don't give a care. Their days are coming. You know all about violent men. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says violence begets violence. And these miserable people that hate Christians, they call us do-rights. They hate us with a passion. Friends, we are truly living in a world of fools. They do not know God. They do not want to know God. God is not in all their thoughts. Friends, we are truly living in a world of fools. Please hit the like button. I'm inviting you to subscribe. I'm Grandpa Hickory, and I just wanted to talk to everybody and just let them know this has not been a day from heaven for me. I got to the chiropractor's office and they informed me that they had sent me a voicemail at 10 o'clock in the morning when I'd left at 9.15. And I told them when my phone's at home on my kitchen counter on charge, they said, well, sir, the chiropractor's sick. And I turned around and I said, okay, I was leaving. Well, they said, when do you want to come back? I said, make it May 20th. Friend of mine, I'm going to start going once a month. That is an hour and 40, sometimes hour and 45 minute drive. But this has not been a day from heaven. And we are truly living in a world of fools. Pray for America. Pray for Jerusalem. Pray for Israel. 
and pray for each and every one of us. When you get in your car, pray. Pray. And then pray. Hey, you have a good day, and I'll catch you on the next video. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'm thankful to God that I'm alive. I had a very, very bad situation happen to me this morning. But God brought me through, and I prayed for that man that did that, and I forgive him. God bless you all. Remember, we're living in a world of fools in 2024. We are definitely in the end time. There's no denying it. See you on the next video. Bye-bye now. Thankful to be alive. Bye now.